peak lets get bigger and bigger, the uh, milk requirement goes up and up. And I'm not very envious of their mum anymore. It's a mad fight to get uh, milk these days. building a portable chicken pen. We've got mobile chicken hatches and we made the uh, chicken fence portable so that we can move the chickens around the pasture because the chicken droppings are incredibly important for growth of the topsoil and we want to make sure we're developing topsoil on the farm. We get to have our topsoil rebuilt and we don't need to use synthetic fertilizers, we're using natural fertilizers. So the fruit we grow on the pastures will have natural fertilizers with natural minerals instead of synthetic fertilizers which rob the soil of nutrients rather than add to them. And the chickens that are happy get nice healthy eggs with bright yellow yolks. All right, Roby, thanks for spending uh, some time with us. I know it's late in Dallas, Texas, where you are, but we have a number of people in Australia and New Zealand now who are really interested in what you have to say. Uh, not so many of us uh, are familiar with how you went from being a Marine to an ER physician and then to what you do now, which is some sort of combination of natural medicine, orthomolecular medicine, or how you describe yourself as a car mechanic for people. So can you kind of give us a couple of minutes rundown on how that uh, transition in, in uh, professional role uh, occurred for you? In deciding to move from the military to medicine, I wrote down for myself whether, you know, in deciding if I was going to be a, a career Marine officer or uh, to something else, I made out a list of occupations that I would choose from if I did decide not to be a lifetime Marine officer. And I listed the things that I wanted a profession to have, right? So a uh, good financial basis and uh, you know, contributing to society and enough variability that I wouldn't get bored. I, I made a list like that. And when I finished the list, really the only two occupations that fulfilled each requirement were medicine and, uh, and being an attorney. And I went through medical school, and in my second, during my second year, I really became enamored of my physiology professor, Dr. P.K.T. Pang, who's just a world-renowned physiologist. While I was working with him, this other opportunity came up. Uh, they had been trying to initiate a student exchange program between Texas Tech University and Jinan University, which is in uh, mainland China. And so I studied Chinese traditional medicine, the acupuncture, the herbal medicine, this philosophy about yin and yang and the balance and the body being able to heal itself, you know, if we gave it the natural things that it needed in, in order to heal itself. And went on to become an, an ER doctor. And as, you know, things will happen, you get older, you get busy, you're not paying as much attention to your eating habits and that type of thing, and these metabolic things start to creep up on you. Well, for me, it was high blood pressure. And as many doctors will do, you sit there at the lunch table and you ask one of the specialists, so what should I do to treat this particular thing? And one of the interns told me to take some medication. It was some beta blocker at the time. And I took that. And fortunately for me, I didn't know it at the time, but fortunately for me, I got all the side effects that you could get from a beta blocker. Uh, we know that beta blockers inhibit thyroid function. I didn't know it at the time, but I was hypothyroid. So this made my condition worse. So this, that incident, it brought back 
to the front of my mind this stuff that I had buried about the Chinese traditional medicine and the body being able to heal itself. And so with that experience of all these side effects of the medication, I thought, well, maybe I'll give these, uh, this body balancing thing a try and let's see if I can heal myself. So I go back to the physiology books, you know, that I had uh, acquired under Dr. Pang. And what I did with him was we, I studied high blood pressure, right? And I did all these experiments using the artery of rat tails. I mean, in the rat world today, I'm still feared. Um, so you know I would take these rat tails and you know we would expose them to different uh, solutions of different osmolarities of um, you know potassium and magnesium and that type of thing so I went back to some of those experience and uh, you know in Guyton's book of physiology and so forth and started uh, re-evaluating how the body normally controlled blood pressure you know what were the autonomic homeostatic functions that the body normally used to uh, control blood pressure and when I look at those pathways, there were no alpha blockers, there were no calcium channel blockers, there were no beta blockers, there were no uh, ACE inhibitors, none of those things were there. So there, it was all um, you know, things like uh, T3 and potassium and magnesium and nitric oxide and those type of things. So, so with that information, then I started changing the way that I ate and um, you know, doing, trying to implement these things that would naturally control blood pressure. I did that. I got my blood pressure under control. I got that big old belly that you see in some of my pictures, right? I put that back down to the flat stomach that it was when I was in the Marine Corps. And once I proved to myself that that could be done, then morally and ethically, right, the onus was on me to at least offer that to patients when they came in. And from there, and just more exposure to other physicians like Dr. Jonathan Wright, I just uh, followed this path and it, it led me to where we are now. Right. Now that you mention the thyroid, you write a lot about th- low thyroid function predisposing to infections in the body. Can you run us through that philosophy? Because it's not really something covered well in modern medicine, yet you seem to think that that has a huge part to play in chronic illness these days. I started treating people for, this, uh, for these candida overgrowths. And one of the things that I noticed was that as I did that, you know, many things more than just the chief complaint got better. So they may have come in with a rash, and I treated them with the this candida protocol, and their blood pressure came down, and they lost weight, and their cholesterol improved, and their blood sugar got better. So many more things got better that it pointed to a systemic uh, effect of this candida overgrowth on multiple sim- systems. If T3 levels are down, then it weakens our kind of our homeland security system. If the homeland security system is weakened, then these what we call opportunistic inf- infections or overgrowths, um, then they have the opportunity then to, um, to overflow. So candida is, is one of the main ones. Okay, so what you're saying really is that if we want to maximize our health, then we want to minimize the pathogenic burden in our body. And if we want to minimize the pathogenic burden in our body, we should optimize our thyroid function. And the best way of telling us uh, that our thyroid is functioning optimally is go to the doctor and get a blood test for thyroid blood tests. Is that right? (laughs) Well, the blood test is not the most... Uh, it's not the best way to assess thyroid function. And I, I don't, you know, there, there are lots of reasons by, uh, about why the, the thyroid test does not work for us. Of course, the gold standard uh, over here, and I think it's probably the same over there, is the so-called TSH test or thyroid stimulating hormone test, which is not really a test for thyroid hormone. It's a test for the hormone that stimulates the thyroid to produce thyroid hormone. I mean, so at best, it's an indirect test in the first place. But then it also turns out, uh, and this may have something to do with age, but that um, it's not a very accurate test. We can have that test can be normal or abnormal and, uh, and not really have any correlation with what you see clinically. So I've really found that to not be a worthwhile test. Now, if, if the TSH test is elevated, then no question that that patient has low thyroid function. But long before that, right, the, the range of normal that we have now is just completely inaccurate. 